So um, I'm going to talk about um, a laboratory study that my colleagues and I conducted uh, last year, last summer, looking at self-titration and compensatory puffing behaviour in electronic cigarette users who were given a high and a low nicotine concentration e-liquid. So these are my disclosures. Okay, so I firstly just want to talk a little bit about self-titration in tobacco smokers. Um, so this is what really was the basis for our work. So this idea of self-titration has been around in tobacco smokers since around the 1970s. <coughs> and the idea here is that smokers can adjust their nicotine intake to maintain an optimal level for them, even though they may smoke cigarettes containing higher or lower levels of nicotine. And a particular interest to us was whether smokers change the way that they smoke when switching to a lower um, nicotine yield cigarette. And a review of the literature in 2014 concluded that smokers can achieve approximately 60 to 80 percent of their ordinary nicotine intake when they switch to a lower nicotine yield cigarette. And this is this, is take, this happens by compensatory puffing behaviour, so mainly through taking longer, harder drags and by taking more frequent puffs. And you might expect then that if smokers are taking more puffs and taking in a greater volume of smoke when they switch to a, a lower nicotine yield cigarette, that this might increase harms. And actually the evidence on this is mixed. We know certainly that reducing to a lower nicotine containing cigarette doesn't reduce harms. There's some evidence perhaps it may, it may increase harm. So that was really the basis for our work in vapours. And of course vapours will tell us that when they switch to using a lower nicotine concentration e-liquid that they will increase the amount of liquid they consume. Um, and it was also suggested to us that vapours may be able to self-titrate as well. After we um, did this pharmacokinetic study a couple of years ago, this was 2012 now. So in this study, we had 14 experienced e-cigarette users who all used a standard cartomizer type electronic cigarette containing 18 milligrams per milliliter um, of nicotine. And they all took 10 puffs and then we allowed them to use ad-lib for the next 60 minutes. And what was of considerable interest to us here was the marked individual variation. And this is shown here in this slide. So it's not captured by the mean, but here you can see at that 10 minute point, when everybody has just had 10 puffs within a five minute period, we're seeing some people who are barely getting kind of two nanograms um, per milliliter, nicotine per milliliter of blood and others are getting very, very rapid nicotine intake, equivalent to the 15 to 30 nanograms per milliliter that you see in tobacco smokers. So this set the stage for our next study, looking at compensatory puffing behaviours. And of course, the Article 20 of the Tobacco Products Directive was another impetus for, for our study, so I'm sure you're all very well aware of this directive that was, came into effect last month. So, um, nicotine concentrations exceeding 20 milligram per milliliter will no longer be allowed um, in the EU. And this will affect approximately 200,000 vapors according to the ASH survey of vapors um, published this year. So a, a sub substantial minority and in addition to those other researchers suggested that many more people need to use a high level of nicotine concentration in order to transition over to, to vaping, to allow them to stop smoking completely. So, we were interested then, because this, these people using above the TPD cutoff, of course, will be obliged to switch to a lower nicotine concentration e-liquid. So we were interested in understanding to what extent can users compensate for that lower nicotine strength by altering the way they puff. Water, <laughs> so our aims. <laughs> water there. <laughs> so our aims were to determine the extent to which e-cigarette users, as I, <laughs> the extent to which e-cigarette users self-titrate by compensating by changing their puffing patterns 
when they're given a lower nicotine concentration e-liquid. And we were also interested in the subjective effects, whether this affected urge to smoke, withdrawal symptoms, um, positive and negative effects, and of course, whether there was a difference in blood nicotine um, concentrations in the two conditions that we used. So we had 11 male regular e-cigarette users. They were all non-smoke, all ex-smokers who had been using e-cigarettes daily for at least three months and they were all used to using a higher nicotine concentration e-liquid <coughs> above the TPD cutoff. We used the Evic Supreme from Joy Tech because not only does it have a puff counter, but it has the downloadable software that allow us to look at puff duration and number of puffs over uh, an ad-lib vaping period. And the Aspire tank <coughs> from Nautilus, we used a standard 1.8 ohms with 8 um, 0.5 watts. Our e-liquid was chosen based on the five most popular brands in the country at the time and we chose one of these at random and the criteria was that they had to be available in a high 24 and a low 6 milligram per milliliter um, nicotine concentration. And the study was conducted double blind and counterbalanced. So here's our procedure. We started with pre-screening our participants. We wanted to ensure that they were all familiar with using um, the higher strength nicotine. So we had a salivary coating cut off <coughs> for inclusion. Our participants then abstained overnight for 10 to 12 hours and then provided a baseline blood sample and they also rated their current urge to vape and their withdrawal symptoms. They then con continued with a 60 minute ad lib puffing period and we took blood at 10, 30 and 60 minutes and at those time points, participants also rated urge to vape, withdrawal symptoms, and at the end, they rated um, their positive and negative symptoms on a visual analog scale, which was converted to a percentage rate. And then the perfect topography, the puff number, puff duration, um, was collected using the EVIC, and we recorded the amount of liquid consumed as well. So here are our data. This is the perfect topography data. Um, the blue columns are the high condition, the red columns are the low nicotine concentration condition. And you can see the top left for mean puff number, participants increased their number of puffs from 48 to about 72. The mean puff duration also was increased um, in the low condition from 3.8 to just over 5 seconds. And that resulted in a greater consumption of e-liquid. So participants doubled the amount of e-liquid they consumed from half a mil to just over one milliliter. So clear evidence of compensatory puffing behavior here. So what about um, like nicotine delivery? So the, again, low is red. Uh, low is <laughs> red, yeah, blue is high. Um, so you, the striking thing here from this graph is, is the blue line. So under the high nicotine condition, you can see a rapid increase and very high levels of blood nicotine delivery. Our mean was, our mean was about 34 nanograms per milliliter. This is typical of cigarette smoking, which is between 15 and 30 um, nanograms per milliliter at the 10 minute point. But huge individual variation around this with some only reaching two and others reaching over 100. So that was, that was um, quite striking. Um, in the low nicotine condition, again, we had fairly good nicotine delivery, reaching about nine nanograms per milliliter, increasing to about 22 at the end of the 60 minute period. But you can also see clearly from this that blood nicotine levels are significantly higher in, in the high condition. So, although participants engaged in compensatory puffing, their levels were still significantly higher. Not as high as you would expect from the difference in the nicotine in the concentration. The difference in the nicotine concentration was only about a quarter of that from the high, but the blood nicotine levels um, were, didn't differ as much as that. So, some evidence that the, the compensatory puffing was effective for, for blood nicotine delivery. And these slides just show the relationship between the puffing topography variables um, on the x-axis and the 
nicotine in blood on the y-axis. And you can see a clear relationship for all variables, so for a puff number, a high correlation between blood nicotine and the number of puffs taken, slightly lower for puff duration, <coughs> and overall higher for the high nicotine rather than the low nicotine condition. But again, clear evidence that puffing topography variables are closely related to blood nicotine delivery. What happens to um, subjective effects? Well, even though we had a, a very clear difference in blood nicotine delivery between the high and low conditions, the magnitude of the reduction in self-reported urge to vape and withdrawal symptoms was very similar. So it seems that compensatory puffing, although um, we have a difference in blood nicotine, was similarly effective for reducing urge to vape and craving, even with the, the low condition, although this is a small sample, of course. We also asked about positive effects, and here you can see that we are starting to see a difference. So in the high nicotine condition, there were self-reported hit and self-reported satisfaction were higher, but statistically they, they weren't different from the low group. So we can conclude from this that um, yes, there is evidence of self-titration in experienced e-cigarette users who engaged in compensatory puffing patterns when given a lower nicotine concentration liquid. This included increased puff number, increased puff duration, um, resulting in a doubling of e-liquid. So as with tobacco smoking, self-titration was, was not 100% effective. Um, it was good enough to result in a reduction in urge to vape and withdrawal symptoms, but we still see a significantly higher level of blood nicotine in the high compared to the low condition. So as well as the interesting puffing <coughs> topography data, the other interesting finding was these very high levels of nicotine that can be achieved very quickly in certain situations. So here we used an advanced tank and atomizer system we use high nicotine concentration e-liquid and, of course, experienced vapors. And in that situation, for some people, not everyone, but for many people, we see very rapid nicotine delivery. So the implications of this, um, first of all, self-titration has been described as an attractive feature of cigarette smoking, allowing the user that fingertip control over nicotine delivery. And it appears that vapors, to an extent, are able to self-titrate too, using compensatory puffing techniques, and this might be this might contribute to why vaping is more attractive than, for example, other forms of nicotine delivery where you can't um, self-titrate to the same extent. The comp compensatory um, puffing patterns that we um, observed resulted in a doubling of the amount of e-liquid used. Um, this may be effective for alleviating um, urge to smoke and withdrawal symptoms, but of course it comes at a cost. If you're doubling the amount of e-liquid, not only a financial cost, <laughs> but possibly also a health cost as well. So any exposure to potential toxicants or carcinogens in the vapor will be increased if somebody is switching to a lower nic nicotine concentration e-liquid and they're doubling their um, puffing. Um, and my colleagues, um, Catherine Kimber and Leon Kostmeider, have actually got a poster on this. So they've replicated these puffing patterns that we observed in the lab under the high and the low nicotine conditions and looked at carbonyl exposure. So I point you to their poster if Leon bought it, did you? Which will be out there um, later on today. Now, of course, we know that the exposure to toxicants is going to be far less um, than to tobacco cigarettes. But of course we want vaping to be as safe as possible. So this may um, include advising people to use a higher rather than a lower nicotine concentration in their e-liquid. So, limited nicotine concentrations um, in e-liquid, other than not even being particularly evidence-based, suggests to us that it's, it's not going to really improve, it's not going to offer any health benefits, certainly, and if anything, at very worst, it might even have adverse health effects. And then finally, the um, blood nicotine levels that we saw. 
I mean, I personally think these rapid and high levels of nicotine delivery are a good thing. Many smokers still report that for them, vaping is not a satisfying alternative to smoking. So if we can achieve blood nicotine levels that are more similar to cigarette smoking, that might actually help to improve smoking cessation rates. Uh, there's, of course, raised concern that with these high levels that we're seeing, this might prolong nicotine dependence. Whether that is an issue or not, people have different opinions about. So I just want to finish by acknowledging my colleagues and co-authors, Catherine, Olivia, Mira and Colin. Thanks to Sarah for useful discussions about this study. And then to our phlebotomists and um, laboratory technicians. Thanks.